So we have a 3D scene with enemies that chase us. We need to relate to the player the positions of the characters on the screen. So we need a mini-map. First, we will go into the assets that we need. We have a level already in enemies that's a given, but for this technique we will also need an image of the game area. I make my levels in Blender so I can get an orthographic view of the map by simply taking a picture using a camera. This would work even if your map is not a square like mine. If you have a really out there shape, you could join the pictures together in an alternate program like GIMP. Now that we have the world map image, we need some type of pointer. We like to use this arrow, the humblest of all beings. We then descend into the Godot scene, which is fairly simple. I have a lot of nodes, but they aren't necessary for our mini-map. We only need a control node as a holder, and a texture rec node for our map image. Let's view the script on the node. We only need a singular function for the simple display that we have. The function is named display enemies. So the idea of the minimap seems really difficult, but all we are doing is checking the positions of the enemies, then putting a texture of an arrow on that point relative to the image of our map. Let's start by getting the enemies. We can do this by declaring a variable called devils in our case, and we'll use the get tree dot get nodes in group function. Your enemies group name in the parameters, just make sure to remember to add the enemies to that same group as well. Now we can loop through those enemy units and get their positions. Once we have their positions, we need to make sure it is proportional to the map. We do this by dividing the position by the size of the map. Our map is 430 units in Godot. Since our map is a square, we can do this in both the X and the Z. My map has no third axis, but you could easily adjust here for multiple floors by checking the Y in Godot, which is up and down. I get the measurement by placing a node at the endpoints of the map and just writing down their locations. It's not really super accurate, but it works well here. I should mention that I have moved my entire map into the bottom left quadrant of Godot workspace, so I only have to deal in positive numbers. If I didn't do this, my enemy positions would have to deal with offsets based on their quadrant which is kind of annoying. Basically, to not have to deal with this, I just moved everything down to the only positive quadrant. So now we need to get the size of the image we are putting enemy indicators on. We have a texture rec, so we can just check the current size of the X and Y and save them as variables. We can then multiply our enemy's percentage based location by our map's size to place the pointer at that location. In my head, I like to think of it like this. If our character is three quarters of the way up and half the way over on the world map, on our mini map, he would still be three quarters of the way up and half the way over on the image overlay. We are basically just doing the math to figure that out. We then subtract half the pointer size variable because that centers our arrow indicator on the image. The image we create starts from the top left corner we just adjust it here to move it manually to be in the correct position as if it were starting from the center. We save those X and Y coordinates to a variable that we will use once our texture rect is ready to be instantiated. To ready our texture rect, we first create a new one. We have to set its expand mode to expand ignore size, which will allow it to grow and shrink in any way. We then set its texture to a simple arrow texture any square size will work well here. We have to set its pivot offset, which makes it rotate around the center instead of the top left corner. We then set the size to make it whatever we want. I use the pointer size variable to stay consistent. We then set the rotation degrees to the negative of the current enemy rotation. It's negative for me because I have the models rotated in Blender by accident. Yours may just be the regular rotation. So if your guy is completely the wrong way, just flip the sign to check that first. Also super important, make sure to use rotation degrees instead of just rotation. Rotation is in Euler units and rotation degrees are in the degrees units we all know and love. We then add the pointer as a child of the map and set its location to the X and Y positions we established earlier. This should display the location and direction the enemy is facing to the player. Okay, okay, so that's pretty much it for the video. Um, I do have this right here. We have this on the player. So if we press the M key basically to bring up our map, if the map is visible, 
and then we'll set it to false so the map is no longer visible. If the map is not visible, then we will set it to true, and we will also tell it to do a quick check. I have this next state right here. You don't need to actually have a state machine on there. You could just call the function with the way we coded it like this, quick check, and that would be the way to do it with how we coded it and displayed it, and that would call that function on your uh, map to update everything. I'm just doing it this way because I'm doing a little more advanced game. Um, so we'll then go to this area and I'll display how it works. We have the enemies here. Those are the guys uh, right here. Uh, here is our player. And then this up here is a goblin, so he will not show up. They're supposed to be hidden. So let me go ahead and run this game and we'll see what we get. Uh, so our map shows up blank at first. I hit M to hide it. And we can see our enemy is right over there. And if I hit uh, M, we can see his uh, his location displayed by the uh, arrows. So that looks accurate for him. If we go and turn this corner, we can see we have uh, another guy down here, which is um, kind of difficult to look at. But uh, we can see where we are here. Um, this is the way we'd be facing. And so, uh, yeah, that's pretty much the end of the video. Uh, that's how you make it simply. And um, stay tuned for more. I'll probably be doing one where you can like update it actively and do a radar. Um, I want to do like Metal Gear Solid mechanics uh, with that radar. I think that'd be fun. It's just fun to code. So I want to make tutorials for those. Um, now I'm just going to show what I'm doing a little bit here. So this is a game that I've been working on uh, live um, on my channel. You can go to my live or see my playlists. But it is a horror cooking game where we have to grind up goblins to cook them into meat. This is a first uh, part of the game. The second part is the actual cooking. But um, here we can uh, startle this goblin either by shooting him or by walking in his direction. That will cause him to run. He gets stuck on that guy, uh, which is kind of funny. Sorry, everything's a little loud, but he just runs to a random location and tries to hide again where all of our uh, demon butcher guys are now trying to kill us. So we can shoot at them. And if I track down where our goblin actually is, and I do a headshot on him and kill him, uh, they're all beating me up. But I can actually pick up our goblin, bring him into this area over here. Uh, you can see he's flailing above us. And we throw him into our grinder to uh, make some meat. So that's basically what this game is going to be about. Uh, it's a horror-themed cooking game in Godot. And um, yeah, I code it live 6.30 to 8.30 uh, p.m. Eastern Standard Time on my channel on YouTube and on Twitch. That's Average Godot Enjoyer. So if you like uh, tutorials and stupid shit like this, then uh, go and check me out. Um, everybody have a good one.